Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of CHL The Zone. I am B Major, your host, and we have four guys here, all of the management in the CHL. We have my AGM with the Saginaw Spirit, Vodnan. What's up guys? We have the Pin of Whalers GM, the 7th Defense, former Memorial Cup champion. Right. Yeah. We have Suse Marie Greyhounds GM, Rowdy X51. Good, I guess. And last but not least, we have the co host of CHL The Zone, CKXL yeah. Fan 26, GM of the Kitchener Let's Rangers. Let's do this. Yeah, so, uh,. We're going to kick this off like we normally do, going with our stars of the week, and we are going to kick it over to Whale Fan for his star of the week. All right, man. Um, this week, I actually am surprised with what came out. Quite a bit of GMs, AGMs are on the list this week. Although I've heard an interesting story that quite got, or that got me interested in seeing a defenseman that's um, risen up. Uh, I'm going to go with Salt St. Marie's Rowdy. He went 2-0-0 this week on, or that last week on defense, gaining seven points, four goals, plus minus of nine, and um, doing so he played right D. It's a good job being able to sub in at a uh, or being put into another position, um, knowing that he seems to be a better defender. So uh, moving on here. Uh, Go moving on, ahead. on Glory. Glory actually did the same thing for us this season. He was originally signed up to play center. And he's actually done some things, but uh, Glory, who's your star of the week? Uh, I'm gonna go with Devil Dog Tater. He's been phenomenal all season. Um, I, at first, it looked like it was just a product of what was in front of him, but um, with a lot of the two goal, one goal leads that uh, North Bay had this week and last week so far, um, he's really shown that he's a top goal in this league, and with a 1.83. And an 86.3 save percentage in six games, and all of them wins. He's looking pretty solid right now. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, seven, who's your star of the week? Uh, I'm going to go with the defense here. Uh, I tried him off my team earlier in the season, barely Jewish, 92. Uh, he had went 3-0 this week with six points, uh, two goals there, uh, plus minus a plus 10, and four shots. So 3-0 on the week, did pretty well, beat my team. And yeah. Yeah, I'm also good with the fence for my star of the week uh, from the Peterborough Peets, uh, DeAngelo 97. Uh, that guy, I believe, is undefeated this season. The only person that has played more than five games and is still undefeated this season. And as a defenseman, to be in week five and to still be having an undefeated record, that is, <clears throat> I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before in the CHL in a long time. Like, if you look at this guy's stats, uh, this is not the first time you've seen him on Who's Hot on this show. It's not time you've seen him. As, it's not the first time you've seen him as one of the top couple of guys in the power rankings. Like, this guy has been consistent for Peterborough all season long. And that that defensive core is one of the best in the league. They have a lot of guys up there who actually is uh, playing well up there. And honestly, um, D'Angelo has been really doing a good job all season. So, uh He's my star of the week going 3 0 0 with 8 points, 2 goals, 6 assists, uh, an average of 2.7 uh, points a game playing at lefty. So, last but not least, Rowdy with his star of the week. Um, I'm going to have to go with uh, I Steal Napkins over on uh, North Bay. I know they have a great offense, but uh, this kid uh, definitely keeps them in games and you know minimizes any sort of uh, opportunities on the other end. I mean, he was. He was three and zero this week. Um, he's not going to put up goals for you, but he, he'll he'll dish it, he'll dish the puck all day. Yeah, those long stretch passes, uh, and um, I mean the kid will play anywhere. It looks like he's played mostly on defense for North Bay, but uh, you know and he, he's got a plus ten as well. I mean that's that's going to happen on North Bay, but uh, I don't know. I just I just think that he's a huge part of what's going on over there as well. I I really I really think that uh, he's he's played great. You know he's uh, 11 and 0 on the season, so I think I think he's been he's been huge for them uh, last weekend. You know throughout the season. I think everyone picked a defenseman. There was no goal. There were, I think uh, the only the, the only person that wasn't a defenseman this week was Devil Dog Tater. That was picked out of all of us. Yeah. 
<clears throat> but uh, anyways, going into the next subject here, we're going into trades and waiver wire. I mean, no, actually, who's hot and who's not, excuse me. So uh, we'll kick it over to Vod and then. Who is your who's hot and who's not for the week? Uh, uh, I would say for a team that's hot right now, or last week was hot, is probably going to be... North Bay, and I'm, I hate going with that team because they've been hot all season, but you have to be a phenomenal team to get 16 wins in a row and already have the President's Trophy pretty much clinched last week. Um, they clinched it tonight versus us. Yeah, yeah I right. saw that. But they, I mean, let's be honest, they had the thing in the bag way before then. Um, they were phenomenal. Um, let's just see if they can keep it up during playoffs. Um, team that's not hot. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Saginaw, my team. Um, three, four, and two, so basically four and four on the week. Five hundred. There's a lot of games we could have won and we didn't, and we're just not showing that we are the team that we were last the weeks before. And we've dropped now, I think, from first two weeks ago to fifth. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, actually going over to. KX Whale Fan 26 says who's hot and who's not. Alrighty, so for my who's hot and who's not for this week, my who's hot team, I'll go with the Peterborough Peets. Uh, they look to be jumping up nine spots in the power rankings right now, going eight and one on the week. Um, it seems they're doing well on time and attack as well. Not going to be surprised if this team takes over Bubble's spot in the standings. I know Bubble's downgraded a little bit this week. Uh, my who's not team, Barry, once again, back on the list here on my who's not. I knew, I honestly, was. I am going to say this, I kind of knew this was going to happen. It's not their best week, and I'm not surprised. They went 2-7-0, and and they're losing time on attack, and that's a big amount of time on attack being lost. Um, other than that, that's those are the two teams for my who's hot and who's not. Uh, we'll move it on from here. <clears throat> All right, so my who's hot. Uh, I'm actually going to have two who's hots here because I feel that both these teams are very deserving. The first team is going to be the Ottawa 67s. Um, I know that in the first two weeks of the season, a lot of uh, people were saying that this team had no hope. Uh, a, lot, a, a lot of guys said that this team was a complete another train wreck. They were saying that they were easily probably the worst team or one of the worst teams in the CHL. But when you look at their last 10 games, um, they are on a three-game winning streak right now. And considering that this has been recorded on Monday, <clears throat> August 2nd, they are currently four points behind of the last playoff position behind Kingston, who has been struggling a lot of late which actually surprises me, to be honest, but the 67s are looking really strong, and my other who's hot will be the Lake Erie Otters, who at the end of the week four were first in the conference. They acquired guards over the week, who I feel will definitely be a good, strong addition to their full attending core. Um, they have a very high-powered offense and a, a couple of really good defensemen, like uh, Jack of all games, and they have one of the better offensive lines in the league. <laughs> with lines like a uh, Cadre line over in North Bay, so those two are my who's hot and my who's not for the week. Uh, I'm going to have to say the Mississauga Steelheads. Uh, the Steelheads they haven't played terrible, but at the same time they're they're still not where they really were in the first week. Uh, they are five and five right now at the moment, but they are on a three-game losing streak and they are actually tied for the last place spot. So if Mississauga doesn't have a good week and the 67s end up having a good week, or that could be vice versa with Kingsland, then the Ottawa 67s will probably stick in there. And Mississauga hasn't necessarily been playing the best despite some of the trades they've been making. So there might be not. But going over to the 7s defense here. Uh, my who's hot for this, uh, well, after tonight, I'm going to go with the Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds just because... They are at the top of their conference right now. They've won a few games to keep themselves there, and it just seems like 
they're going to win the games they need to to stay ahead in their division at least. I know my team is catching them, but they've been 3-1 and on the week while we've been 4-0. They're still five points ahead of us, so it's going to be hard to catch them. But who's not for this uh, this past week will probably be the Kings of Frontenacs. They went 1-4-4, four four, um, which isn't obviously too good, especially when you're facing off you're the last spot in the playoffs and you have teams behind you trying to catch you with the Ottawa 67s. Kings is going to have to be better than that to be able to stay in the 8th spot there. <clears throat> All right, then. So now we go over to Rowdy with his who's hot or who's not to end off the segment. Um, I'm beat major. I'm going to have to steal yours. I'm going to have to go with the Erie Otters. Uh, they, they were 8-1 last week. Um, I don't know. They just they seem to be coming on strong right at the right at the right time here. And um, yeah, I, th- I think this week they've continu- continued to um, do just as well. But... Um, I mean, they, they've been they've been dominant, um, and uh, you know we played them uh, just last week, and, and they were they were tough. I think we I think we gave them their only loss, but I, I'll tell you it was it was a tough game. I mean, you know their their goal difference is a plus ten, and uh, I don't know they uh, their their time on attack is, is is negative four, but I mean they they take advantage of their opportunities, and you know they turn them into points. So um, that's my who's hot. Um, as far as who's not, I'm gonna have to go with Owen Sound. Um, I know a lot of guys on these team uh, on this team. They went uh, they went four and five, um, but uh, I don't know. I, I just I don't know what happened there. They they have a lot of great players. They they did great at the beginning of the season. I know the dangerous duo there, Metal Ghost and, and Glitch Goling. They uh, they, um, they they were on fire, and then all of a sudden they just kind of kind of died off. But um, with that being said, I I still think they're going to be contenders. It's just as of right now, they're uh, Need to sort of get uh, get back on uh, going here. Uh, that's uh, that's who's not for me this week. Yeah, and Owen Sound actually they they've been looking pretty sharp most of the season. This is probably the first week I've really seen them kind of off personally. <clears throat> like I know me and Gloria, we both knew Sports Free prior to the season. He's definitely got a good manager mindset. I'm sure he'll be able to turn that around with Coach Golan. Oh yeah, he's a phenomenal manager. He's a great guy, um, very mature, very respectful. I imagine a turn around pretty quickly. Oh yeah, definitely. And now we will go into the trade salt and waiver wires for the week that uh, caught everyone's attention. Uh, yeah, that trade deadline extended, so this was the last week for trades. Um, so uh, I'm gonna let Bodman over there kick it off. Any waiver wire or trade that caught his eye or caught his eye. Um, well, I did notice that both of our former goalies, Street Beast X and Vaporhawk, were put on waivers. Vaporhawk, immediately after he was traded, um, was put on waivers by Belleville. Um, what? He had 11 claims on him. Yeah, yeah, uh, I saw that. I know Vaporhawk and Street Beast. Um, Street Beast wanted to play defense. Um, we actually ended up throwing him in as an ECU, and he played so well, we gave him another game. Um, Vaporhawk wanted to play right wing. Uh, he plays IOHL as a goalie, I think, for San Jose last season. Um, I was kind of surprised to see both of them. Vaporhawk's a pretty good goalie. He just wanted more playing time. And Street Beast, um, yeah, he's a good goalie. Um, I think he wasn't even used as goalie for Windsor. So that that was interesting on waiver wire. As for um, trades, I mean, I didn't see anything that stuck out. I saw um, seventh made a few trades that looked pretty good. Um, the pucks for bag of pucks. Yeah, the bag of pucks trade between us. I mean, that was really good. Um, I know we picked up a lot of depth. I know a lot of guys were going after depth, us included. I think we moved three or four guys um, that it turned into like, I think a good uh, 8 to 10 players that are active. We're just stacking up on depth. I think a lot of the teams did that this week. Um, but there wasn't anything big because I think a lot of the teams got most of their big trades done last weekend when they thought it was trade deadline, and uh, everything was kind of done by now. Yeah, um, a trade that definitely caught my eye was uh, with uh, <clears throat> it was between Plymouth and Owen Sound done on the 30th. 
it was Switch 98 and Teddy Beavers for Raging Rabbit, and I believe that's how you pronounce it, and Veritas 852. Uh, I know Veritas is a pretty good center. I played a couple games with him back in Season 5. Um, he's definitely not bad, and I know Raging has been one of the top players all season. I'm not sure what 7th here is planning to do with him, but I know that he's definitely a uh, talented player. I've seen him around. Uh, definitely one of the mm. players. And with Waiver Wire, like you said, uh, Vaporhawk, I think 7th actually picked him up as well. Um, yeah. He's definitely a good goalie. Um, I played with him last season, and he was one of the top 10 goalies in the league for one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, this season, the couple of games he played, he played outstanding, and the only reason me and Glory would or me and Bodman would have even considered trading him was because uh, a lot of it was playing time. That's the only reason we considered trading him. But uh, those two things really caught my eye, as well for the Montagna trade going over to Kingston, who I think will probably help him if he uh, gets his amount of games. But uh, over to Wales then. Yeah, uh, this week I'm actually going to touch on trades since this, this is the trade deadline. I've seen quite a bit of what I call low trades, where um, quite a bit of players are being traded for just one guy. I see it here with Ottawa. It was done a couple times. Uh, the Greyhounds sent about six players for one guy, and then also it happened again when Guelph traded seven guys to Ottawa for just one. Also, I am happening to notice that um, there was a bag of pucks trade in there, swapping a bag of pucks. I don't know what was going on there, but I guess uh, best <laughs> to say it seems like at uh, Saginaw home games, it looks like they're going to be using Plymouth Whalers pucks, and <laughs> for Plymouth Whalers home games, they're going to use Saginaw pucks. But that's just me. Um, on, um, although I do see the greatest was traded from Ottawa. Great goalie. That was with me for tour, for like probably a week when I took over Iowa last season. But, I mean, I hope Anna uh, uses him for maybe a couple games. Who knows? But he happens to be a very good goalie, even with the Seguins last season in the CHL. So We would, um, we would definitely use him if he signed up. No, he hasn't yeah, signed up this yeah. week. If he, if he actually gets well, up anyways, and 725, uh, then we definitely use him. Yeah. Well, I'll send it back over to B Major. I'm all set. With this topic. Um, seventh, I think we've touched up on you. I have, if not, do you want to go ahead and go? Uh, yeah, uh, just one second. Uh, um, I think we have. Dad, I think we I have noticed the Calgary for the... Do you already go? There was no, nice obviously. Uh, well, there was a lot of trades, just no big ones. Uh, I made five, nine or eight, six people for one. Guelph, obviously, as whale fans said, traded seven for one or something. I just think that's that Ottawa needing players to be active or those teams just wanting to get rid of a couple of players so they can get some random assignments and sign up late in the playoffs or something. Could be a tactic being used by Rowdy over there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Probably about it. <laughs> that was, you made a lot of moves yourself, and it looks like you are going to be using some spirit pucks. You know, if you want to touch up on that, you... Well, I'll I'll touch up on that. So Plymouth doesn't win a lot of home games, and that's all Saginaw happens to win. So we just make a lot of money off our home stands, and we just wanted to help Plymouth out. So. Well, we beat Saginaw today, <laughs> so we got out. Well, our four four and two just looks beautiful. Real Plymouth isn't even a team anymore. That's true. Yeah, they're not even a team anymore, actually. So uh, this is the last Plymouth team that's even going to be in LG. So the seventh spot. Uh, well, we're winning the Memorial Cup, so it's okay. It <laughs> yeah, we'll put it into the shrine. But uh, anyways, uh, last but definitely not least, uh, Rowdy with his uh, trade and waivers of the week. Um. So waivers, I don't. I'm a bad GM. I don't really pay too 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 much too too, too much attention to them. But uh, I mean, one big one you guys brought it up already, but it was it was Vapor Hawk. Uh, I thought that was a steal, and I think what was it, the Columbus got them. Um, as far as trades, I would really hate to be a homer, but I think you guys missed up on one here that I think is going to be huge come playoffs here. But uh, a trade between uh, you know Sault Ste. Marie, my team, and uh, Belleville was uh, Stoner uh, '95. Uh, mm -hmm to uh, Belleville for Clutch, Merck, and uh, Noble, Terrible T. 
Um, as you guys probably remember, Stoner was, I think he was number yeah. three points um, last season. Yeah, he, 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 he took over Hamilton last season in London as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he's and he's an unbelievable player. You know, we just we had so much offense that we we were like, well, we could take. You know, we, we took we took Merck, and Merck is a, also he's from North Bay last season. He he's a great player, um, but we needed depth on defense, so Noble and Clutch kind of came in there. But um, I mean, that's one big trade for me. And then another, I know you guys touched on it, was my <laughs> my six or seven for one trade. But um, I, a big player in there actually is uh, I'm a gamer, and. Uh, I think that's going to be huge for the 67s. Um, I they got they got stretched in a trade um, earlier that day, and I think you know maybe if if stretch and uh, gamer would have maybe played on the same line, that's a that's a pretty pretty solid line. Gamer's been averaging I think three or four points a game in the uh, eight. And small yeah. line actually Sunday, and they won three to one. Yeah. And stretch, I'm not sure. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not sure if they're planning to use Stretch or what line they're planning to use, but I played Stretch. I played with Stretch for three weeks last season on my team, and uh, he went over to Plymouth, and uh, I can tell you Stretch is a very talented player. Very, very talented. Um, he knows what he's doing, uh, knows how to cycle the puck, but he's definitely a sniper that can bring it home as well. Like, if you put him at the center or the wing, you know I'm sure he can fit very well with Ottawa. He can, uh, you can definitely give them a good playoff push if they put him with the right line. Yeah, I mean, even like KTFO is sitting on their training camp, but those three guys can somehow get on the same line together. That's a that's a great line. KTFO is another great forward last season. So they have the they have the pieces. They just need to put them together and you put know. Put on the scoreboard. They put on the scoreboard exactly. <laughs> exactly. So now we're going to hop into a new segment, um, starred by a whale fan over here. Um, it's going to be uh, Whale Fan's Keys of the Week. So I'm going to let him uh, have the floor and kind of introduce the segment to all of you lovely people out there. All right. So many, um, you know, sports-related things have, you know, they mentioned like keys of the game or something like that. Well, this is a little different. I decided to do three keys for this week coming up, week five, last week of the regular season, and... A lot of things you should really know coming into this week. So we'll kick it off with my first key of the week. Uh, watch out for waiver wire. You can definitely fix your team using this tool. I myself have had to use it before with Ottawa last season, and it's helped turn. It's helped me get some pretty good players. Even maybe a couple came back to me for this season to help out play. Uh, my second key here is don't get banned. It's the last week of the regular season. I'd hate to see someone not be able to play or not be able to witness playoff action just because they got banned. And last but not least, my third key is uh, put stats in quick because they'll help you. It'll help you figure out what seed you can land on for the playoffs coming at the end of this week. Um, that's my three keys of the week, guys. Um, I'll be back with a new set of keys for next week. And uh, without further ado, I'll toss it over to B Major once again. And uh. Also, by the way, I just want to uh, say two quick things that are accomplishments. For, this is the first week we haven't had a manager ban all season. This is the first week we didn't have a manager ban. Uh, I can change that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Zeno, I quit. <laughs> Zeno, I hope you know we're joking here. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, yeah. I I would if if seventh ends up being removed tomorrow, then I'm just going to sit there and oh my god. Uh, and also, I wanted to give uh, a shout yeah, out to Bobby yeah, here for uh, putting removal requests. <laughs> well, during the fucking show, yeah, of course. <laughs> during the show, you put a removal request. Like, <laughs> oh my god. On every inactive, literally every inactive. So. Yes. yes. Plan on taking action on all of those pretty soon. So there's gonna be like twelve or. 15 guys off Saginaw's team pretty soon. And this, and it's too late, though, because I think random assignments might be over with. I think they shut them off. I just don't want to go. No, not yet. I don't, wanna win, I don't cool. want them to win a Memorial Cup with us, so, you know. Yeah. We're here for the ride. Don't don't stay. That's so true. So true. But, uh, Memorial Cup only goes to your roster player, but I'm not sure why you're concerned, because I'm going to win it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. Speaking oh. Playoffs, All right. Well, we're going to get in the playoff talk here, actually. So, uh, 
basically we're just going to talk yeah. about some of the playoffs, some of the teams to watch out for, some uh, possible factors, and uh, we're also going to touch up on this a lot next week. It's, this is going to be a uh, next week's show is going to be a CHL the Zone playoff edition, round one. So let's get into it. Um, well, then, what teams do you think are going to um, well, hopefully make a difference in playoffs? Honestly, I am very interested with what I'm looking at here. It's interesting. It's really interesting seeing the playoff race in the west side. Right now, it looks honestly to me that the top seven seeds are going to clinch. It's going to come down to that one last spot. The Guelph Storm are going to have to hang on for dear life here. Uh, it looks like the Windsor Spitfires are knocking on the door. Currently, as I'm looking at this, they're two points back, and uh, the Sarnia Sting are already starting to get hot at the right time. Maybe they make it as well. They're only five points back, so that can really change things up. And then I'm going to go to the East here. I know Barry's out at this point. They got the official letter E. Unfortunate, but I do like the Ottawa Sixes chance or 67's chances. Um, I just spoke with RBK a couple hours ago, AGM over there. He's really eager to push this team into the playoffs. It seems Ottawa is going to know what they're doing over the course of this week. And they might be able to knock off a team like the Ice Dogs, Steelheads, or even the Kingston Frontenacs from making the playoffs. But, I mean, it would really suck to see Ottawa get knocked out because of such a, hard, such a lot of hard work going on uh, over there right now in this last week. So I'll toss it over to the, um, someone else to voice their opinion here. I'll go I actually with, have uh, a quick question uh, for you, though, yeah, Will. And this is a this might be a this might be a bit of a brain crusher here. Out of out of those three teams that are actually looking to possibly be on the hang on the dear life, which one do you if if the 67s did make it, which one do you what which one of those teams you think would probably be bounced out? To be quite honest with you, I've actually looked this over quite a bit, and I knew you were going to ask me this question. <laughs> so, um, this is what I think. Currently in the standing, sixth place Ice Dogs, okay? Now, mm -hmm. I looked at their schedule going forward in this week. It's going to be tough. Tomorrow they play the Salt St. Marie Greyhounds, and they're probably going to bring a powerhouse of an offense. And then following that, it's Peterborough, and Peterborough is going to look to pass Belleville in the standings. Now... That following day, Wednesday at 9.30, they played the Kitchener Rangers. And if you haven't noticed with that series, well, I played the whole series, and I am looking to sweep that team with me and that the whole way the whole way through. Now, the team that would miss is the Ice Dogs, just because the next four games they have, three of those games are going to be toughies. So, I mean, that is really going to be like some serious luck with the Ice Dogs and them losing one of the Cribs brothers, I'm assuming. Yeah, is yeah. what they're known as. Up to um, NHL. Yeah, one of them gets called up to NHL. That could mess up lines here. So Niagara is going to have to really, you know, come up with something in the final bit here. So uh, I'll toss it over if anybody else, has, if, unless somebody has another question. Um, I'll, t I'll chat about it for a second. Um, back to what you're saying in that West. Um, the West, hold on, let me get this up. Um, the West looks pretty set. Um, I would say I would agree with you, the Storm and the Spitfires fighting it out for a spot. Sarnia could come out of nowhere. Um, they did it in last week. Right, last they did week. do it last week. I mean, they have improved the play. Um, finally got over the 20 points not too long ago. Um, the Spitfires are showing up for games. Both these teams are showing up for games, so they are coming to play at least. Now, the East, I would say that I think the Steelheads are going to drop out, and I think the 67s are going to take it over. Um, the Ice Dogs, yeah, they're looking good, but the Steelheads are keeping it close in most of their games. And honestly, Ottawa is on a tear. Um, their last five games, they've won four, lost one, and they only lost to Oshawa. Um I think Niagara and Mississauga, you're definitely looking at falling out of the spots. Um, I think Kingston could fall out, but I think that they're going to improve their play in the last half of this week and still keep their playoff spot. Um, other than that, I think the, the West is going to move around a lot, hopefully, for me. Um, a lot Erie lost, I think, tonight to Barry, which makes me question their depth. 
and if they played their top line all three games this week already. So them and the attack, and then the Whalers, I think, are going to move up. So. Wait, um, something you said with the Otters, what were you saying about the loss? Um, they lost to Barry tonight, one nothing. Oh, I got you. Okay, yep. yep Which okay. I, that's a rough loss. Uh, not scoring on Barry in general yeah, is a hard loss. Rough. I think, uh, I, would, be one of their, I think that's their first shutout of the season, actually. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd cry a little bit Barry about that. I had a shutout. That game was a 1-3 uh, win for Barry. Oh, oh, was it? It was on one nothing. Yeah, no, no. There was no shutout there. Um, oh. Although my advice to Barry at this point, I would say play out what's left and make the best of it. Sure, well, you they won't did. make the playoffs, but hey, go out in a bang. That's right, the they did just move around, too. They moved management around. Uh, oh, I yeah, think Canadian Pride right. just dropped down to yep. AGM. They uh, waived their uh, former uh, stand-in GM, it looks like, to Germaniac. He's on waivers, yeah, if any of you guys are interested. <laughs> um, and uh, Attractive Walrus finally came back up into as the GM, which I think he was really the driving force behind that team. I know Canadian Pride, but I know Attractive Walrus – did most of the work on that team, so go upset a bunch Honestly, of teams and go ruin some people's playoff hopes. Honestly, though, I am going to add, I know I've been talking quite a bit. I'm sorry, guys, but um, I will go forward here. I know, Vatnin, you and I have heard from Canadian Pride. I think, I know we're not going to touch on it this week, but I am going to go <laughs> forward. I am going to say he would be of what I've seen. It looks like he hasn't really changed his team during the weekend. He's only made like a few trades. And quite frankly, what I've sent or, or well, I guess a quote here, not an actual word for word here, but, you know, a couple players I traded back to him like probably a couple weeks ago. Um, what it looks to be is those two are his top line players, but you're asking them to go win games, right? Now, if I'm correct, they might not win every game, which I think they've already lost one with, uh, I'll mention the players here, Philadelphia and Tryhard. Don't try to you know, get mad about it, Barry, but it's true fact of the matter is, um, you know, they might lose a game and go 2-1, and one, who knows, but you can't lean on those two guys to get your wins because they can only play three a week. So, Ooh, you know, and then, that like, what do you... Oh, oh, um, Very cool. what I was saying was, um, um, they're relying on two players, try hard and ill, and by the way, guys, don't, you know, go get mad, but it is true fact, is that, um, that Barry cannot weigh too heavily on these guys to win games for them. They can only play three games a week, and they've already lost one this week, so, you know, it should have been that time where you were making roster moves that last weekend, but I don't understand how you don't change your team and go out the way you're going. So I honestly have no clue how that works. Who was so. that that just dropped out? I think that might have been Vodnin. Vodnin. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. It might have been a lax, but I don't know. I like yeah, it. Yeah, he'll get back in there. Yeah, so. but uh, <clears throat> uh, I completely agree with you there, to be honest, well, fam. Um... I barely saw the make. I barely saw Barry making any moves whatsoever. Um, that paid off for Sarnia, I guess. Maybe they had something under the ropes that maybe no one really knew about. But uh, considering Barry's situation for literally four straight weeks, it really shocks me that they didn't make any moves sooner. I barely see any kind of change that they made on their main roster whatsoever. Um, yeah. Honestly, it really was shocking me that they didn't make so many, that they didn't make nearly any moves. Um, they, most of their games, honestly, I'm looking at them, and a lot of those games were either close games to where it just doesn't seem like they could get the time on attack. Or they were just blowout games to where it seems like no one played well. Um, yeah. At when you're on, when you are nine twenty eight and two, and you win maybe one or two games every week, <clears throat> you figure it's 
maybe just right to make some changes. But I guess that maybe the guys over there felt they had a good enough roster, but it just didn't prove for them this season, and it's the reason why they're the first team eliminated. <clears throat> but like I said, going up and going over to the West, though, I'm looking at the West, and I feel that Guelph actually is going to. Dr I feel Guelph actually will probably stay up there. Just considering Windsor's schedule this week, I'm looking at their schedule for the rest of the week, and uh, they're playing a lot of very tough teams. Uh, tomorrow they play probably the biggest game they'll have all season in Sarnia. If they lose that game to Sarnia, then that might possibly have a huge shift. Yeah. Um, they play Saginaw at 9:30, who's looking to turn things around. They play Plymouth and Peterborough, who are both on complete tear so far. They play Owen Sound on Thursday. That might be the possible game that could make or break their seat. They well, lost to yeah. they lost both games tonight to Sault Ste. Marie, two four loss, and they lost to Sudbury, which was a one two loss. They lost to Belleville two to three Sunday, and they beat Barry eight to two. They're starting out one and three, that. and right. I, this is not the start they would have wanted to make a playoff push. Although Guelph. Oh, hi there, Vodnan. Uh, glad to have you back. I look, yeah. at Sar I look at Sarnia. They have a bit more of a uh, favorable schedule. They lost last night to North Bay 5-6 and Saginaw 3-5, but they did beat Sault Ste. Marie 5-4. But uh, Sudbury lost 0-3 uh, to three tonight. So they're actually 1-3 and three themselves, which is not looking good. They played Peterborough on Thursday. Uh, they play Mississauga, Oshawa, Windsor, and Ottawa on Wednesday and Tuesday. And those are games that I feel if they, they contend with the big dogs every season. They always go up and they play, or not every season, but they contend with the big dogs every week. They've beaten a lot of tough teams. Um, they actually, if they nearly beat North Bay and nearly ended the streak, then I really feel that a lot of those teams they can definitely contend against. Then you go with Guelph, and Guelph, I believe, this is why I feel they'll make it. Uh, Sarnia might might be a little bit too late for them, I feel. They're going up against Barry tomorrow, which is a winnable game. It, it could possibly be a forfeit considering the situation. Uh, North Bay is a, um, you never know what North Bay is going to try to do. They might be just testing out experimental lines. They've punched President's Trophy already, but yeah, you know, you got some lines they're playing against. They're playing against Niagara, where both teams are going to be fighting hard, because Niagara, like you said, will, and they're, they're fighting for a playoff spot. Yeah, they're going to be. So that's going to probably be a game to watch out for. Then they play seventh team in Plymouth and Kitchener on Thursday. Honestly, yeah. all, these team have, all these teams have touch, tough schedules. Barnia has the favorable one, but they're five points behind of eighth. And I just question whether it's just too little or too late starting out one three. Let's go to Sarnia for a second, actually. Here, I've looked up. I pulled up how many trades they made this season, and they've made. They haven't made quite a bit. I mean, it's a total of six trades. Um, maybe there could have been a rebuild around that time, though, because I know their season wasn't the best. But you know, it could have been a great time to really rebuild that team. I think if they may have rebuilt that team and, you know, fixed it and by like taking a weekend out just to make some trades, they'd be in the ball game to make the playoffs, definitely, no doubt. But I do think that they can still make it the way they are, but I do wish them good luck to it. And um, that'll be all I say. I mean Oh, uh, Dylan texted me saying Oh but I, mean, like, I might be able to switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, I know Rowdy and uh, Seventh haven't talked much, so I think we should give them a turn here yeah, and definitely. let them speak a little bit about what we're trying to or what we're covering here. Yeah. Uh, Seventh, do you want to start? Yeah. All right. Um, I per the only thing I have to say about playoffs is the Western Conference race for the third place position between Owen Sound Attack, Plymouth Whalers, and uh, Saginaw Spirit. We're separated by three points total. Um, it's just a fight to see who doesn't play each other. The other team, the winner, I guess you could say, plays the kids of the Rangers. So, I mean, there's four teams there that really don't want to play against any of the other four teams. Uh, Sault Ste. Marie and Lake Erie 
look to have the easier, uh, I guess, line up there against London or Guelph, whoever they line up with. Um, but I think you see uh, the West say the same how it is. But the East, I think Kingston's going to drop out. Uh, 67s will jump up. Kingston, for the last uh, five games, they play Barry. They play... Um, well, Barry is the only easy one. They play Barry. They play Belleville. They have Saginaw, Sault Ste. Marie, and Lake Erie Otters. So I'm assuming they're going to go one and four over the next five games. I think that you'll see Ottawa get a couple wins and just move past them. And seven, you touched up on something that I found interesting. You said that the Greyhounds and Otters have the easier matchup. Um, honestly, I'm looking at the two and seven matchup. If things stay the way they are, which could possibly not be the case, uh. That two seed could possibly be up for a tough fight. I was telling Whale fan this earlier. Um, London has been actually pretty good this this past two weeks. They've uh, <clears throat> they've definitely improved. I know that they had a lot of higher expectations considering how they dropped and their preseason went. I know this isn't necessarily the most uh, the most imaginable season that they could have had, but they're in a playoff spot first of all, and second of all. If, if I had to pick an upset team, that would probably be my team for an upset. Like, don't get me wrong, whoever uh, gets that two seed really should watch out because uh, it, it happened a couple, It happened in a couple of matchups last season. It could very well happen this season. So if you want to see a sleeper team, you know what happened last season with Rowdy and Niagara. Um, London could be somebody to watch out for. All right, well, let's move it over to Rowdy here. He's been a little quiet for a little while here, so let's uh, see what you got, bud. Yeah, no, B-Major B actually just just touch up on I was just going to bring that up about, about London because I know at least as a team we're, we're trying like hell to stay in the first spot because we want nothing of London, at least in the, at least in the first round. Um, I think they're, they're, uh, they're on fire at the right time. So, um, I mean, as far as, as, far as the, uh, the Western... A conference. I just kind of, I just kind of feel like it, you know, at least towards the end of it there with uh with Guelph. I I think that they're gonna in, in the eighth. I just I think it's too late for Sarnia. That they, they've been playing really. really they, they beat us tonight. I, I give them props for that. Um, but I think they're just a just a hair out of the out of the race. I mean, they have a fairly easy schedule, but um, the spitfires have an extremely tough schedule. Um. So I think it might be, you know, I think it might be for Guelph to take there for the for the eighth seed. And I mean, you go over to the uh, Eastern Conference, and I really think that Kingston's in trouble. I mean, I think I really think the 67s, you know, they're trailing by four points. Uh, 67s have uh, they they have a tough schedule as well, but Kingston has more tough. Than, uh, I hate to put my team in this category, but they play Belleville, uh, Sault Ste. Marie, Saginaw, and Erie, and I just feel like, you know. That's going to be tough to tough to beat those four teams. I do want to jump in on that too. Um, I, if you guys don't remember, when Ryder was the GM and got removed, he actually, with him getting removed, they had about four overturned games, I believe, that were wins. Yeah. So just do remember that that team would be in playoffs without the overturned wins, and Kingston or Mississauga would be out. And, I yeah, totally forgot about that. I one of the games. And one of their games was against us. They they played us hard. They actually beat us. And then I looked at the the game later on, and, and it was turned. It was overturned. Completely. Yeah, their roster was over. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, um. But uh. But yeah, like I said, I just I, I think that I think that Kingston's in trouble. they I think 67s will will take that eighth seed easily. Um. Ice dogs. I don't know. Ice dogs might be in trouble too. I. I they 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 play uh they play the Pete. They play Sault Ste. Marie. They play Kitchener. I I don't know. You know, they, they have one less game played, um, but uh, so I don't think they're going to get that extra game played. Uh, but I, like I said, I, I, I think it's Kingston out, 67's in, and, and uh, I'll touch back on the West, but I think the West, I, I think the top eight right now are going to stay. So, but I don't know, that's my take on it, guys. Oh, oh, oh sorry, I just noticed. Um, this isn't probably going to air in time, but uh, Oshawa, Lake Erie... And it looks like, oh, for sure, Sarnia. Um, all, all over roster size. Sarnia has 21 players on the active roster. Now they have four IR call-ups. But 
basically. Wait, which three, which three teams? Sarnia, Lake Erie, and I believe... Oshawa? Oshawa. Oshawa's yeah. 18. Those uh, are... Uh, they don't actually take up a roster spot. They just don't get moved down. Oh, yeah. okay. I don't think Oshawa has any IRs. Yeah, they yeah. have two. Oh, they do have two. Okay, never mind. I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> here I am trying to yeah. fucking squirt out wins here. <laughs> yeah. Point, points of the week. Oh. Like, any G, any good GM, you always look at that. You always make sure they have 17 on the roster or less. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And easy easy wins. Easy over. <laughs> yes. I want point something out interesting with Kingston. I'm looking at their schedule, and the only team that they haven't, that they're not, the only team that they're playing this week that they haven't lost, that they're not losing the season series to is Saginaw and Barry. And I'm looking at their game versus Belleville. Belleville has one of the better lines up there against them, which kind of concerns me a little bit for them because I know that Belleville is a very good team up and down. Um, whoa, a TC player just contacted me. Um, <laughs> which one? Rogue Wait, which Nova, one? Rogue Nova. Um, oh, okay. Uh, but I'm looking at Belleville. I mean, I'm looking at that <laughs> Belleville Kingston game, and uh, I honestly think that if Kingston misses the playoffs, then that might be the one game that could possibly really mess with them. Because, honestly, you look at the 67s, and they've been consistent all week. Um, their schedule, I don't, I'm looking at it right now. It's not necessarily the worst schedule in the world to have. It's not an easy schedule by any means, but it's not a bad schedule either. Um, you never know what North Bay is going to do. Um, they have won the President's Trophy, so they might just use some of these games from now on just to get TC players a chance. You have Plymouth, you have Lake Erie, you have Sarnia, you have Sudbury. Uh, Sarnia, I think that game, Sarnia will fight hard if they're still in playoff position. Sudbury, they've pretty much clinched, but they're probably still fighting for playoff ground, even though they're down by a lot. Plymouth and Lake Erie are all still in a race just to try to, uh, get up in playoff position. Because Pl- Seven touched on it earlier, that race from 3 to 5, is it's a dead heat. It, it really is. Actually, I something well, that I want to mention... Well, let- Go ahead, Roddy. My bad. No, no. I was just gonna. I was just gonna mention because he mentioned that he didn't know what North Bay was gonna put in for a lineup. I think something interesting that I've kind of been waiting to see because I've been w- waiting for the scoring title deal to happen. But uh, Anasium Kadri has not played a game yet this week, so the 67s are probably gonna see him, and and you know some of these other teams that are fighting for a spot, I, I they're gonna see. Belleville's top line, I guarantee you. Oh, I so, bet. I bet my team's gonna see their top line too, just so they can devastate us like they did before. So it's it's gonna be tough. I, like I said, 67s. I mean, I, I I'm kind of pulling for them. I, I like the underdogs, but uh, you know, North Bay's gonna play their top line. Who knows? Erie might throw in theirs. Um, By the way, I'm looking at Kadri's games. He's playing against so... London tomorrow. Uh, the 8:30. He's playing Matt Line versus London. And if I'm correct, it looks like he will be playing Guelph as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, he's going to be playing Guelph in London. And Guelph, and that's tough for Guelph because Guelph is trying to fight for a playoff spot. And with that, I'm looking at the past history for uh, the North Bay Guelph series. Each each game has been a three-goal win or more by North Bay. And with this one, I hate to say it, I, I hope Guelph, I wish them the best of luck, but going up against a line that's 36-0 and 0 and has over 130 points, I honestly, I don't think that's going to happen too well for them. I say that top line loses one game this week. Um, yeah. actually, if they lose one game, it would be the to them. It could be the Guelph, because Guelph has a little bit more motivation than, than um, North Bay does. I say London beats them. I say London. Uh, depends on who London has out against them, but I do not see Guelph beating North Bay tomorrow. They are gonna get annihilated. <laughs> Wait, is Kadri playing? Kadri yeah. Plays. Oh, Kadri, <laughs> Stiffy, Hope, and Weatherbeezy with Scrammy and Ashil Napkins and Devil Dog Tater. Wait, what? Wait, who's facing them on uh, Guelph side? This it's gonna be an annihilation. They're it's Guelph's top line, but. Can, if comparing Guelph's top line to North Bay's top line is 
It's, it's like a second line. <laughs> it's like a it Guelph's top line would probably be, and this is no offense to any Guelph players, so if anyone tries to give me any crap in the forums or anything for this, this is no offense, so don't start. Guelph's top line would probably be a TC line for Dorf Day. It would probably be a TC line. They would top probably top. not even show up or sign up for games. I mean, look at the plus minus on freaking North Bay. Half their players are above 20. Exactly. Like, this, like that first line... And this is something that's also an interesting topic. Some first lines on other teams would, could possibly, and be no offense to those players, but they could be TC players on teams like maybe Sault Ste. Marie or North Bay or Bellable. And yeah. that's kind of the case here with this matchup between North Bay and Guelph. But I would look out for that London North Bay game. That could possibly be. London one will be closer. I, yeah, I just looked, and it, it, honestly, they don't really have anyone. They have a combined points total of 27 points over that over that forward line. Yikes. <laughs> to the belt, to the belt um, I'm sorry, to North Bay, it's 138, and plus 111, eight and a plus four. So, I take yeah. back. I, it was wishful thinking, but you know. <laughs> I will say Ottawa could be North Bay this week, though, especially with the way they've been playing or pushing. Um, that team is like a group of buddies, and with RBK and Bears, I mean, and Walsh kind of helps out too. So, I mean, just watch for that game because I mean they're either gonna lose by one or two, or they're gonna win. I'm still interested to see who they're throwing out against me tomorrow. I guess Squish and Scoreless Elk are two of them. They just confirm them. Honestly, my message to Ottawa here: keep Walsh at center. It seems that that's his strong point right now, and he's done better there than defense. And I've seen Walsh play defense, and I know it. But honestly, he's a better center um, to use in comes playoff time. And uh, to put all this to bed, I've actually left out a couple teams in the Eastern Conference playoff race. The Sudbury Wolves, I mean, they look like they're going to clinch the playoffs here uh, with, like, only five games left this week. They look like they're going to make it only with one more win. That's all they would need. The Generals are going to follow them probably into the playoffs. It's a good seed, but like for say maybe if you put um, a team like us with Kitchener, we would probably stack up in the fourth seed, probably tied with Sudbury. But that's only me on the situation that it looks to be that the Eastern Conference has less points than what is in the Western Conference. Wait, doesn't that other media show talk so highly of the East? Yeah, the East is so good, guys. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, fucking the 67s, the Generals could lose every game this week, and the 67s could jump up to fifth. And then the Generals yeah. could be out. I mean... You never know. I wouldn't be shocked, honestly, if that happened. I know Generals are doing pretty well, but they still have a losing record. Everyone from five down has a losing record. I mean, and you look and at ours... Evan up has a 500 or better. The West. Knights yeah. have a positive record. Like, there's no way. I mean, I guess there's North Bay. Yes, there's Belleville. Yes, there's Peterborough. But over there, whereas the whole West is even. I mean, mm. yeah. Well, it seems <laughs> like the Eastern Conference is a little weak right now, with the record-wise. Like an under 500 team, starting with the Generals down, like four teams that are under 500 <laughs> could make the playoffs here. We're looking at something pretty serious that it might be that the Eastern Conference is weak compared to the West. It might be that the West is a little bit more competitive right now than it looks to be comparison to the East. And speaking of which, on that note, I don't know how you guys feel about Belleville, and I don't want to just push people down, but I think Peterborough is actually a better team than Belleville is. I agree. I know that's crazy. Something but people don't think about that I want to point out is that Peterborough is only two points behind them. So yeah, not only Bulls that. Both and Peterborough won both this The today. Bulls do a lot of weird moves, too. What, the Garbs trade, sending Vaporhawk on waivers. And now Garbs is with Erie. Yeah. He's starting I, over there now, which is good. I thought Garbs was going to be put to rest on Erie's roster, but I'm glad to see that they called Garbs up. Hopefully right. he gets out nearly like he did in Belleville, but for Belleville, Belleville, I don't think that was a very bold move, trading him out and getting demented Christ. They're moving a lot of guys out the last three weeks. 
the MGX Nuclear. I don't know what the story was on him. But, I mean, Cregan, yeah, there's a lot of guys moving in and out of there. Yeah, they got Stoner from you, Rowdy, but with the way that GM does it, like, he's been moving guys up and down the roster. I I don't know what's going on. They just seem like they don't set their lines, and I that could really hurt them in playoffs. I could see them getting beat by a team like Niagara, even, if Niagara actually gets the Cribs brothers back. Even even What's Ortillo too. Point? Like I don't even I don't even understand why Ortillo left that team because that he was he was killing it in the preseason and then all of a sudden he just disappeared. Or, Ortillo, yeah, he doesn't even sign up for games. I just saw a removal request for him too or a uh, warning. I, I just signed up. I just moved one too, but he was you know he was content on Belleville and then they just moved him and he lost you know lost interest I suppose. And that's the thing they look so phenomenal week one wow. week two and then wow. but even then we were getting close. Yeah. While we're talking about Belleville, they just got uh, handy player on waivers. They got the Germaniac on waivers today. <laughs> Wait, you mean they got the Germaniac on waivers? Oh, yes, they actually did. Uh, recently, they, their Germaniac was sent to Belleville. They claimed him, and it looks like they might play him at goalie, to be quite honest with you. He might be even a PC goalie, I'm not sure, but, I mean, maybe it's patching up Demented Christ a little bit. I'm not sure, but maybe that could be the case. Who knows? But at least your maniac's on a decent team right now in Belleville um, to be witnessing playoff action over there. Germaniac's so. a great guy, but why would they get rid of Garbs? I just don't understand that move still to this day. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, you pick up a lot of solid players, but jeez. Yeah. They've been Actually, moving. Actually, I noticed something with North Bay. Going back to North Bay here, I've noticed something's changed really, really it's a really interesting deal here. If you look on their roster, Stevie mm -hmm. 1219 is in that goalie slot right now, starting. So I'm interested to see why he was there and Hasek and Bounce are called down. I know they still have Double Dog Tater up there, but I don't know what the reasoning looks to be for Stevie being up there. No offense to him at all. He's a great player, and I've known because I've seen him play in the past with Ottawa last season. I mean... At goalie, I don't know if this is for the week or no, going forward, he's but... He's kind of a goalie, but he's playing defense for the season. Yeah, oh, okay, I got you. So, Some um, players kind of have a different position so they don't get called yeah. up. Speaking on that note, for playoffs, playoffs is really going to tell you who has confidence and who yeah. will stick with the people they have and who doesn't oh, and yeah. who gets really jittery. Because I have a feeling guys like Belleville, if they're already getting jittery, they lose one game in playoffs. They're going to switch lines up like crazy. Well, oh, yeah. well one, uh, one thing that I think you got, and, and maybe you guys don't remember from last year, and, and uh, one thing that comes to mind is there's a lot of players that, at least I, I know on my team specifically, that I drafted and I built my, I originally was building my team around that got called up that are coming back. And oh, we are really anxious on that one. Yeah, Kitchener <laughs> doesn't have many in that boat. Yeah, and we it's just, it's one of those things where like there's a lot of players that are gonna contribute to teams that are that are coming back from the AHL, and um, oh yeah, and at least for my team we were shaky at the beginning because we we had guys like Jay Resnick, Kucherov, um, Ebbs that just they 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 were called up and they were supposed to be a large part, and then we have TC players taking taking theirs, which, I mean, it's 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 a product in the CHL, and that's how it goes. But um, come playoffs, I like I, like I said, last season, that was, that was huge for us. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're doing, too. I mean, well, that's what, honestly, um, after now it's after trade deadline, I was actually targeting players that were called up on people like Milwaukee, Adirondack. Uh, we were trying to get Barry's Dr. Dangles PhD for a very long time because he's on St. John's. Um they just wouldn't move them for some reason. But, I mean, there's a lot of call-downs that are going to happen. Um, but there are a lot of call-ups that won't happen, and they will stay up there. And like the Cribs brothers, I have a feeling the other Cribs brothers gets called up and Niagara drops um, hard on playoffs. I mean, we face that team line. They're not – we shut them out, I think, the one time we played them. And there's a lot of people that – I think you're, it's going to show if you're either confident or cocky in the playoffs, and I can't wait to see which team's which. And that's the thing. You point out the Cribs brothers. Uh, I think it's the one with only the U. 
Yeah, it's the, I think it's the one with only the U. Yeah, the one with the U is called up right now. Yeah, um, he is on it's the just team. It's IR call up. His, his yeah. team in the AHL, if this is a permanent call up, his AHL team and NHL team both are in yeah, and I know Utica's got a really good team in the AHL. So and I think Vancouver's actually right now eighth. Barely. Funny. Ahead. Yeah, so I mean they could even call up if Cribs does well enough, they could call up the other one and instantly have two yeah. parts of a line. I mean, there's a lot of teams with those guys that are using them and I mean, to be honest, I traded most of the guys that played on playoff teams week four, week five that were in definite playoff position that I knew weren't go were going to get called up. I mean, it just... Grips. Yeah, we had grips. I, I didn't need them. I, I traded the guy that we got for him. Um, he, there's just a lot of guys that I didn't want to take chances on. I'd rather have TC guys that will fill in and take the chance. All right, well, I know we've gone a little bit too far in the playoff talk, or playoff talk. Maybe this goes into a separate part of our show, but... um. I think we've gone pretty far in depth. Uh, personally, I'm excited to get into this playoff action, and it looks like we're going to all have fun um, with this. Um, uh, at the end here, I would like to thank Zeno um, for being able to be or stepping in and, you know, helping us with, or, you know, making sure everything's in line with the CHL this season, and uh, McDonald for making, making this all happen. So, um... Might as well uh, start um, moving on to the end of the show here. Yeah. Major. Major. Oh, he's he's he might be out. I think he's out, boys. Oh. Major, you there, buddy? <laughs> That's better. Okay. Yeah. Well. Uh, we were waiting on you here uh, to close out tonight's show. I've had a lot. I've had, I've had a great time with the show tonight. We've talked yeah, a lot about the playoff talk. Uh, three keys, obviously. Who's hot? Who's not? Stars is a week. Uh, I think this is the part of the show where we need to announce um, who gets the awesome trophy that you've been showing on the last couple of shows here. Yes, so, definitely. Um, uh... Who do we vote on here? I have to go get the trophy, but who do we vote on? Um, I'm thinking um, out of who was picked from power rankings this week. Um, I'm actually gonna go with. Sorry, I gotta pull it back up. But um, I have. I know we did pick a lot of defense. It looks like defense could win this battle here. But I'm actually going to go with a um, uh, consistent D-man that B-Major was talking about, D'Angelo from Peterborough. I think he deserves that trophy. It sounds like he's a very consistent defenseman. Maybe a defenseman I wish I could have had, but, you know, good job to uh, Peterborough to get a consistent D-man like uh, D'Angelo. Major? Uh-oh. Well, it seems that he's having problems a little bit there, but um, uh, seventh, if you want to pick a guy that you thought uh, uh yeah, could win that yeah, trophy, Dezel would be a good pick for that. Uh, he's had a solid season, to be honest. That he, I saw twelve and one or something. Um, I didn't really, I don't know if he's played some good team to just been placed against uh the worst lines, but to go twelve and one in the season, I guess is pretty good. I give it to him. That's my vote. Aye. All right. So you picked who again? Just so I know. D'Angelo. Oh yeah, D'Angelo. And B Major. I'm sure you would contribute to D'Angelo as well. Yes, I'm going with D'Angelo 97. Bob and uh, Rowdy. Rowdy, uh, you want to go first? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Tendy Prowls, man. Carry. Uh, yeah. I mean, that line of yours, carry, carry London through into the second round, and maybe maybe we'll see it. <laughs> yeah. How about uh, Votnin, last guy to vote here? Uh, who do you pick? Uh, gee. I'll probably go with uh, D'Angelo. Uh, he's been phenomenal. The dude's, 
I played against him. He's he's great. He's probably the best defenseman in the CHL this season. Um, Don't get Brandon Yankee there though. He's also up there consistently every week. Yeah. I still think he D'Angelo wins games. Uh, he's offensively talented as well as defensively talented, and that's hard to find in the CHL. Uh, I think I think for sure he he wins. Yep. I think the choice is pretty clear then in all of our eyes then. I think uh the Peter Bro piece, the fact that the I think that's uh I think that's pretty much it to close out the show. Um Thanks to Vodman, the seventh defense, Rowdy, and co-host CKX Wilson coming on to the show. Um, thank you guys for watching. This show has been brought to you by Major's Walmart Connection, the worst connection in ESHL hockey and Google Hangout. Only for 99 cents a month. But anyways, yeah. for all these guys, thank you guys for watching. Thanks to the LG community, staff, and media team for allowing us to do this every week. And for these guys, this is B Major signing out with episode 6, DHL The Zone. Good night, everybody. Woo!